Hallo, ich bin Falja, ich bin Gutri Schäsket im Programm Ich bin BBC Loppe, ich habe auch Kriege in den Skelochen, ich bin ein paar Tage an den Sölsport in Loppe. Ich bin Hannah McCurdy, ich habe mich nicht mehr gesehen, 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 ich Ich ist fishing soul, ich weiß, ich nicht gemischen mit jedem, ich alle für ein neues Norwich, ich ist nicht hellen und fertig. Leanne, great to have you back on 360. Great to be back, thank you. How are things at Motherwell? Yeah, they're they're going pretty well. Um, we've had a tough start to the season. Um, not to throw that in and, and have a pity party too early <laughs> on, um, but certainly some challenges that I think last season we, you know, looking back, we've certainly given a better account of ourselves so far. The games have been tough, but the improvements in, in the team have, have been really good. Um, other than the Celtic game was probably the one game that we were bitterly disappointed at the, the account that we gave of ourselves, albeit Celtic. You know, we give credit to them because they're a top side. But for us, it was probably just that one mark against our performances this season that have kind of let us down. Yeah, we can't really talk about the beginning of you guys' season without touching on that City, Glasgow City game. So unlucky. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's football, though. Um, you're only ever kind of 90 minutes away from being brought back down to earth. And, you know, we'd started the season against Dundee United. We'd picked up that point. Then we know that Glasgow City is always going to be a tough game and, you know, I know the side so well and I know everything that the club are about, but we try and not focus too much on that. Um, we focused on us as a team and the players gave us absolutely everything that day. Um, certainly if it had been 90 minutes or even 96 minutes, <laughs> we might have taken a point, but the reality is that we, we don't control those moments. Uh, and you need to stay focused because top sides will, will play until the very last second. Um, I always feel that when you play against top sides with you know top players, they don't focus on the time in a, a game. They always feel that there will be time to find a winner, whereas perhaps when you're on the side of it that Motherwell are, you always feel like it's backs against the wall and you're, you're almost hanging on. So it was a really valuable learning experience for us. Yeah, so you're sitting four four matches in with yep. four points. Yep. Are you pleased with how that's gone overall? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've played three out of the top four sides. Um, as I say, we picked up a point against Dundee United. We, we fell short against Glasgow City. The biggest result was the Hibs game for us, which again last season were a side that took a number of goals off of us. Um, we failed to pick up a point against them. So those are the kind of markers that we've set. And as I mentioned, the Celtic game was, was the toughest of them all. Um, and we now head into a couple of matches that are against the teams that are in and around us. So we can focus on you know the performance levels. It's a different type of performance that's required. Um, but we're enjoying the challenge. We're certainly embracing it. Yeah, absolutely. So you've got some tough games ahead in the next yeah. few weeks. What are you focusing on? What have you taken away from that big defeat um, by Celtic? And what are you taking into September now? I think just focusing on us, you know, when you play against the top sides, there's probably a bit more analysis goes into what they do and, and how you try and stop them for huge parts of the game. Um, we know we will never dominate possession against them, so the, the kind of game plan will change slightly going into the games that you mentioned that are, are coming up. So for us, it's focusing on the things that we've done well, but ultimately looking at the the moments that we've fallen short and for us set pieces has, has been one of those things and um, so there's going to be a real focus for us over the coming weeks that we try and nullify you know the amount of opportunities that we give the opposition and the incentive that we give them i always think football's won and, and lost in both boxes so we need to get better at both and there have been a number of big score lines since the season started how difficult is it for clubs like motherwell to come back from a heavy defeat like that psychologically yeah, I think it can be tough. Um, I, you know, I think when the, the league started this season, that was probably the, the one concern that certainly from a Motherwell perspective, we wanted to improve in our defensive record from last season. I think you need to recognise that some of those big sides that you play against, certainly the top four, that, you know, the gulf in, in quality of, of player and, and certainly the resources and what that looks like. And when they get a, a grip of games and, and really find a rhythm, it can be hard. Um, but it's up to us to, to try and do our utmost to you know, limit those score lines and, and try and keep them as, as low as we possibly can. Certainly we managed to do that over the, the kind of first three games in the season. The Celtic game for us was the toughest one. But I think the quality of those sides, as I mentioned, at times if they get up to speed and, and really get a foothold in the match, then it really is hard to stop them. But 
we can only try and improve week on week with that and every club I'm sure in, in Motherwell's position will be trying to do the same. Yeah and um, what have you made of the new look SWPL this season? I actually love it yeah I think it's really good um, it aligns really well with I think everything that all the, the clubs are about there was discussions around the branding and, and what that would look like for the league and for the clubs and there was a real togetherness in, in the approach to, to change things and, and make it look as fresh as it does I think off the pitch it, it's really taken shape and I think on the pitch as well you can see the investment from all the clubs. Everybody is, is really trying to do their absolute best to improve the standards of the, the clubs that they're part of, to just change that kind of culture and, and feel good factor around all the games, even the match day experiences that you see at all the clubs now is really going up a different level. And I think that all comes from the drive and determination to make the game better. How important is it for you as a coach, that kind of increased exposure and, and that new look for, for young girls coming up and coming through? No, it's really nice and I, I think you can feel um, that the players appreciate it as well to be part of that. You know, I think the highlight show is excellent. They get to look back themselves on TV and, and look at their performances, but also see other teams and their performances too. That visualisation for the women's game is, is so, so important. Every other kind of media outlet is, is doing a bit more to cover the game, um, whether it's you know live streaming games, BBC Alba, um, broadcasting lots of matches as well this season, the most that they've ever done. So um, that's all exciting and that's exactly what you want to be part of because you put all that hard work in as a player and not that you need those types of accolades or recognition from the outside, but it certainly makes it feel a lot more professional and, and like you're part of something special. And at Motherwell, that's exactly what we try and create for the players as an environment that you know, they don't feel like it's just a hobby and, and they turn up to, to play. We're now trying to really professionalise that mindset and if everything else around that almost aligns like you know, I had said earlier, then it, it certainly looks and feels much better. Yeah, absolutely. Hand Helmanish at Nara Ichiunda, Hunna Skipper Nashanta, and Hirkin Sakai, Hush Alaba and Light Skipper Lacher, Hutcher, Mr. Lichat, and Lena Hillan and Farah, Timarsh, Nach Toshing Sul, it trust that it Marahai Hive. Gibson, the 
Kapelo Bucin yeri. Kalmak. Mönbür çileniş. Yüzen Tayyip. Yüzüka Yuri. Gibson. Oh, hını taşın. Şşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşşş
Um, and I thought they gave a really good account of themselves. And it was another opportunity for um, Pedro Martinez Losa to see his squad, to make some changes, to freshen things up, to tactically look at it from a, a different perspective. So I thought it was a really valuable game for them to have taken on. Um, just the result, you, you can never get away from that, even although it's a friendly match. Yeah. You still come away feeling you know, slightly disappointed that you didn't take something from it. Yeah, but to equalise so soon after conceding is really great going into the playoffs. What was your main takeaway in terms of areas of strength for Scotland going into these playoff games? I think they just look like a much more collective unit. I think over the last number of camps that they've been together, you can see that there's a change in the identity and the way that they're looking to play. I think the manager's had a lot of time to spend with the group and, and bed down his philosophy and, and what he expects from the players. And I think the fact they've had some of their, their, their strongest players back in and performing well. Um, you know, there's been some injuries, so to see the likes of Emma Mitchell return to the squad, Fiona Brown to come back in, who've been huge players over the last number of years, so that's given the squad a boost. Uh, but I just think they're in a really good place just now. You know, they've went through that period where there were so many kind of ups and downs and question marks over performances and, you know, was Pedro Martinez Losa going to be the right guy to take them forward? And I think now that's that's balanced itself out and there's a real um, strong approach and togetherness heading into these big games. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously defeat uh, against the Netherlands, but then the Faroe Islands, lots of goals. How important is it for folk to get on the score sheet going into big playoff games? It builds confidence. You know, I think confidence is built in substance and you only get that from performing well, scoring goals, keeping clean sheets. And they managed to do that in the Pharaohs game. Yes, it was a different game. It was a different team. It was always going to be a different type of challenge because when you dominate possession for the huge spells in the game that Scotland did, and they might feel you know, frustrated that they didn't capitalise and score more goals. There was certainly two goals chopped off for offside and there was a bit of debate around that. They had a number of other goal scoring opportunities that they passed up. I think from set pieces, they could have capitalised a bit more. But these are all positives as well. They're getting into these areas, they're creating these opportunities. You can see the, the feel-good factor on the pitch, you can see the smiles on the players' faces. And uh, you know that's what football should be about. I don't think you ever really enjoy the game in, unless the environment's a happy place to be. And, and that's what it looks like to me, that the players are enjoying it and they will embrace this challenge to hopefully get them to the World Cup. Absolutely. And how are you feeling with Scotland going into the playoffs? Do you think we can do it? Nervous, yeah. um, <laughs> nervous because our experiences of the playoffs over the last you know number of years were, were never too pleasant, um, and probably traumatised the, the squad to a certain point because there's never an easy draw. Every team that, that falls into those playoff positions are the teams that have just fallen short within the groups, and they're not bad sides, and, and some of them are really top sides as well, top ranked teams. So it's not going to be easy, but I think. Going back to all the things that I said, Scotland have got a belief, uh, they've got a togetherness, it's an opportunity and I think if you know someone was to say at the beginning that you would secure a playoff spot and it would give you that second chance to get to another major tournament, you would absolutely have jumped at it. So to have that chance is certainly filling me with probably a bit of confidence, albeit nerves too. Absolutely and how important do you think it is for the women's game in Scotland at the moment that we do reach the World Cup. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. You know, coming off the back of the summer to sit through the Euros, albeit it was an incredible tournament. Um, hats off to England for, for going all the way. But it was really tough to watch knowing that we had missed out on that. And I was part of that group of players that, that fell short. So the quicker we can back can get back to a major tournament and almost right the wrongs of that failure because that's what it was. We were a really good side and we had huge ambitions to, to get to a major tournament and certainly off the back of you know double qualification for the Euros and the World Cup in 2019, that was the vision. Uh, so it's another opportunity now and thankfully after this summer, you know, you're only waiting until next summer to, to hopefully get there again. But it's massive for the country, you know, for the, the greater good of the women's game in Scotland. We need to beat major tournaments. We need to be putting the international team on the map. Absolutely. And if you're Pedro Martinez Losa just now, what are you saying to your squad? Be ready. You know, be ready for the challenge. Um, don't feel sorry for yourself, regardless of what that draw looks like. Don't doubt your ability. Believe in your team. Believe in what they're trying to achieve. And if they do that and they stick together, you will always stand a chance. At the end of the day, whatever team it is, it's 11 v 11. Um, a bit of luck and, and certainly a bit of quality on any day you can get a result. Absolutely, and we'll be hoping that they do go ahead and qualify after these playoff games.
Genetic Rachel, walking shot that na pier na vehicle like can skip in a talichke bala ugen leven. Hey Gamas is an SWPL ring in Navriana. I had to want my can you see if you think the thing is a fat game. But doing shiny, the Rachel is on to the gang mach, Manhattan. Wo ich auch hab all kosche Dönern, ist die Chimichal, ist Rachel Walking Show. Aber sie hat kein Geld, ist ein Hand Spars, ist ein Hort je. Since I was about four years old, I've always had that bug for it. Um, quite a competitive person, so um, it's something that I've always sort of like prided myself on, and I've always looked forward to having that competitive element in my life. I've met some of my best friends through football as well, so it's something that I'm very, very grateful for, and the opportunities that I've had. I've managed to see lots of different countries through playing at youth level for Scotland as well. Um, but no, I'm just very grateful for what's offered to me, so it'll always be something that I cherish. Like Rachel de Balagundleve, Hart Agus Murison, Mr Glossy Gehibs, but a Hunikitar Ertus again, I learned a sense of professionalism that I hadn't had before. Um, I played socially before that. Murison, we had that element of competition, we were up playing against the likes of Hibs and and at the time, Musselburgh Windsor, which was Hearts, um, we had strong competition there, but just progressing on to the sense of professionalism, the standard of coaching that I received, the players that I was competing against every week for a game, it was a lot more challenging than what I'd experienced before. But I, I thoroughly enjoyed the whole experience. I worked under coaches that are now coaching at the highest level in the game, the likes of Billy Kirk, Chris Roberts. Um, I just learnt so much from them, and it pushed me on in my career the whole time I was there. As you will get a good work of crew in the skill in each of the kids, like Rachel Conley of the Spartans and Son Krishak, but it will be an elder and a bit of a coach. And now it's a good thing to hear, skipping of a book that is an art to go to the club, and it's a good thing to skip in a band of a good stack from a car in a club. It's fantastic. It's, I think it's something that the game needed long before it actually achieved it. Even back to my days at Hibs, I think that would have been a fantastic time with the success that the club had at the time to, to fully integrate it with the football club, which obviously didn't happen, but becoming a part of that at Hearts was fantastic. Having the backing of the club the, to allow us to play at the stadium, we were one of the first teams to repeat, like, repeatedly play at a stadium. Um, and the year that we won the league as well was a year that we fully affiliated with the club, um, which then allowed them to progress on to the semi-professional and sort of professional element that they've got now. So it's fantastic to just have those opportunities that we never really had at the beginning. Ha Rachel and Ishton coach at this in club a high of the length of the bear, Balog and Lave, who saw Rachel is not the smooth as you did, the Nuringish and the Yano. Yeah, I've always been a fan of the club. I used to come to the games at the weekend with my brother and my dad. I um, hold a lot of special memories here over the years. Don't get me wrong, the club has went through a lot of changes in that period. But being able to play for the club that you've always supported is, is always going to be an honour for me. It's always going to be something that I'm very grateful for. I know previously they had a women's team here. However, as you said earlier, the game has changed so much. And the opportunities that people are given now, it just seems like a perfect time to come along and play for the team that I've supported all along. Jeder knew the Hochrich Rachel in the Farke. Rai the Gorstekuk, Naperai in the Blina. Yeah, so we were playing a game, a midweek game. Um, around the end of February, start of March of this year. It was just a very odd injury that I received. I was just running um, past a player down the wing and my knee just decided to give way. Um, so since that moment, I've I tried to come back and join in pre-season about June time. Didn't quite work out. Uh, I ended up paying for a private MRI scan to see what was going on because something just didn't feel right. Um, from there, I'm now on a waiting list for about 15 to 17 weeks for a consultation. So it's been a very long process, very frustrating, but it's something that I've never really had to experience before. This is the first time that I've ever had an injury of this sort of spell or this sort of severity level. Um, sometimes I find it challenging, sometimes I don't. I just try and get on with it, but it's definitely a new experience for me that I think is really important to raise awareness of because a lot of people don't understand what it can be like being behind the barrier of a pitch instead of being on it. 
the club have supported me as much as they can. Obviously, you go through periods where it does become a bit lonely, you do feel a little bit isolated, especially week in, week out when we're winning games and they're coming to training twice a week. You can involve yourself as much as you want, but sometimes it is hard to try and motivate yourself to come along when you're not being fully involved into things. And that's, no, that's not through anybody's fault, that's just unfortunately the way that it, that it is sometimes. Um, but yeah, the girls have been great. Um, a great, great group of girls here that have always supported me since the moment it happened, so I can't really thank for more than that. Uwyddyn yn hai un runach da Rachel a feichging yn skipa a gynnw gleifau da Farke. At sa ha isio e fever son cochonol trawg agas plana er son fain e ddash a cloich. At the beginning of it all, I think I was very naive about it. I thought, well, it's happened now. I'll get an appointment, then I'll get it done, and this will all happen. And it's not been that at all. At times, I have found it very difficult. I try to take it week by week. So at the moment, every day when I get home from work, I'm going home checking the letterbox for the letter to see if it's there, checking my phone to see if I've received a call from anyone. So in terms of that, I think sometimes I'm being a little bit impatient. Um, due to obviously COVID, things are, are backed up more than, more than normal. Um, but as I said earlier, just trying to fill my time by maybe helping younger players come through and try and keep, keep my mind busy as well, but also stay involved in the game in maybe a slightly different way. That's how you go, big and fresh and drastic. How Rachel account is Ruth and Ayla who help you to be able to do it. How you go to and the listeners and Ayla a horse cook, calling this a club. Yeah, it's something I'd love to do when I stop playing. Um, I'd obviously love to manage Livingston when I'm older. Just being a fan of the club, I think that would be fantastic. Um, but being injured, it has it's given me other opportunities. The people at the, the sort of men's side of the club have been fantastic. I was given opportunities to go and do Coventry um, a couple of weeks ago, which I never thought I'd be able, be able to or be asked to do at any point. But being able to take up coaching again is something that I absolutely love. Um, but obviously playing at various different levels, it's very hard to try and find the time to do that alongside your own training. So I see that as a massive positive and it's something that I'm that I'm actually really enjoying. A ballu hun dleid e tarsgu gleid a'n teisen se, agus a Rachel er son a bi'n a farsge. A chwna sin, be di o hwyl a pys taith a sŵrn gig a'n skipa. I just hope the girls still continue to enjoy it, still continue to every week try their best um, and represent the club in, in the way that it should be represented. I think they've definitely got the potential to, to go on and push for promotion this season and, and make that step up. I think we've learnt a lot from last season and even the season before that we are we know what we need to do um, and try not to get ahead of themselves. So sometimes last season when we were performing really well, I think sometimes we got ahead of ourselves slightly. But I can see a complete different mindset this season where we take it week by week and we focus on what we are doing and not sort of listen to the noise that's all around us. Um, but no, I just I really want them to get promoted and I, I just can't wait to join them back on the pitch. Leanne, Rachel's shown so much strength been out with this injury. How difficult is it as a player to be watching from the sidelines? Yeah, she's, she's shown a, an awful lot of strength and patience, I think is probably the, the one word that kind of jumps out at me when I listen to her speak. I've played with a number of players over my career and, and some of them have been faced with some horrible injuries. I've been lucky throughout my career, I've, I've rarely faced uh, any time on the sidelines, but I think when I look at you know the misfortune of others, not just the physical battle that you face to, to try and come back from injury, but the mental strength that you need to show, the perseverance, the commitment, the application to rehab programmes and to stand and, and watch your teammates play and, and perform, whether that's you know in domestic matches, but a lot of players that I've played with have, have missed out in tournaments because of that and it's some of the biggest moments of their career to listen to Rachel and, and hear that she's she's found a way to cope with it just now and, and she's you know ploughing her energy in a positive sense into Livingston, the club that she loves and that she's supported, which is incredible. And I think as long as you have that support network around you and you can find that new focus, you will eventually get through it, albeit it might take a, a lot longer than you would have hoped for. Yeah. And for you as an assistant coach, how difficult is it to to help players through that through that time in their careers? It's really tough. I think, you know, for us at Motherwell, we try and have a real holistic approach to the way that we deal with players. Um, for me, it's not 
ultimately about the player, it's about the person and looking after them and their well-being, their health on and off the pitch. You know, and we try and show a real interest in what that looks like off the pitch and we try and prepare them for moments that they might be faced with adversity in their career because it, it's very rare that you go through a, an entire career without you know ups and downs along the way. So it's preparing them for those moments and offering that level of support as well. And, you know, they do find themselves on the sidelines and they're having to support their teammates, showing that level of empathy and understanding that you don't force them to do things that they don't want to do. Some players might be comfortable coming to every training session and they want to be part of that. Other players might find it, you know, taking a step back and, and having a more distant approach to their recovery and their rehab is better for them. So it's never, you know, one size fits all when it, it comes to that type of recovery or for any reason that you would miss out in football. But that comes down to understanding the person as well. And I just hope listening to Rachel as well that she manages to find a, a way back to football really soon because, you know, time can, can be everything. Yeah, absolutely, and we wish her a really speedy recovery. Um, her club, Livingston, are obviously doing really well in the championship at the moment and looking to looking for promotion. Basically, how how good is that to see um, that kind of drive and hunger of people really trying to get into the SWPL um, and get up there? It's excellent. You know, and Livingston are, are associated with a, a men's top flight club as well, and I think that always helps. That gives you that drive and determination that you want both the, the men's and the women's teams to align, that you want them to be in the top flight. And Rachel sounds, you know, and she speaks like there's a real enthusiasm about the club. Certainly it helps when you have people that are fans and supporters of the club because they can then drive that vision as well. But I think the championship is going to be so competitive this season as well. And I think the way the game has changed and the kind of rebranding of the league this season everybody's desperate to get to the top and as long as the clubs you know support and invest in, in the right manners and they continue to support every aspect of the club's development looking after the players and doing everything that they possibly can uh, i've no doubt it's going to be a, a kind of tight race this season but livingston are certainly one to look out for for the future absolutely and while we've got you here coming back to motherwell looking ahead to the seat the rest of the season how are you feeling about it what are you what are you guys aiming for this season to describe, I'm really excited. You know, I think that's the the main focus uh, in the way that I feel every game, every week. You know, every training session. I'm excited to get on the pitch. I'm excited f for the players to continue learning and developing. And we've got aspirations. You know, top six would be incredible if we could go and and nail that down. But it's going to be really competitive. There's some top sides, the newly promoted sides as well. You know, Glasgow Women have come up. Dundee United have given a really strong account of themselves early on. Uh, so at this stage of the season, it's almost cat and mouse where you're trying to get a real kind of gauge for everybody and, and where they're at. So I think after the first round of fixtures, once we get through that, we'll probably have a better understanding of what a realistic aim will be. But for us, just week on week, just now getting better. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got Rangers at the end of the month, I think. Partick Thistle coming up yep. and Glasgow Women's in between. That's, that's a tough run, but two of those games at home. How, how much of a difference does that make for you guys? Yeah, I think this Sunday we'll, we'll travel to Partick Thistle, yep. which will be a tough challenge. They were a side that we had some really good battles with last season and there wasn't a lot between the sides. We probably felt that, that we could have maybe you know, got more out of the games, but that was credit to Partick Thistle and, and the way they kind of had our number over mm -hmm. the course of those matches. And I think, you know, Sunday's a good opportunity for us to see how they've improved this season. And as you mentioned, the two home matches that, you know, we play our matches this season at Kay Park in East Kilbride, which is a great venue for us. It's a new surface that's been really relayed throughout the summer. So it suits us perfectly for the style of football that we want to play in. If we can take, you know, a number of points at home this season, it will always give you a chance in, in finishing in those higher league positions. So we're, we're looking forward to it. Absolutely, we'll be keeping an eye on those scores and, and good luck to you for the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Well, Shin Hacking Guiv and Nock and the Hacking Billy McConnell called him to studio, a son Sula Horshadash, it's a mere, mere villach, me yedig, a the week, Luch Lysian, Nahalope, a Kishin, Jan Kinjak, which you'll learn think BBC Alope, Gustiano Kinjak, Nakaishu, programs a beach, a three shisket, Kishin Shiv and Nahudis.